Hey, welcome back, Chemistry 30. So we'll do a couple of examples with this, but we'll look at the last page first, and then we'll uh, write down a couple of examples just to make sure we can read that graph. All right, so if you look at the last page, uh, this one right here, so talking about how much gas you can dissolve, etc. So the decreased solubility of oxygen in water as temperature increases is one of the effects of what is referred to as thermal pollution. Often pollution we think of dumping garbage into lakes, but guess what? There's another form of pollution called thermal pollution, in which we heat up the temperature of the water so that um, less gases can be dissolved. And of course, if we have fish in the water, uh, this is a fish. <laughs> there we go. So it's take, it's not smoking a cigarette there. That's just simply exhaling. So we have dissolved oxygen in the water that the fish takes. But of course, if the, the lake increases in temperature, these gas particles will be driven off the water, leaving less dissolved in there. And of course, fish have difficulty breathing if there's less oxygen in there. So the effect is particularly serious in deep lakes because warm water is less dense than cold water. Warm water therefore tends to remain at the top of the cold water at the surface. And of course, if this is warmer up here, it's difficult for oxygen to be to come into contact and dissolve there since it's, the water is warmer up there. So what that causes all the oxygen to simply leave or prevent oxygen from being dissolved in the water due to it being so warm at the top. So fish may suffocate or die under those conditions. Okay, so thermal pollution. Dealing with increased temperature, meaning less gas can be dissolved. So this second graph here deals with gas solubility. All right, now, no matter which one of these I look at, there's a curve here. So a particular curve for a substance. Let's just sketch a, a generic graph here. Let's just call it temp and solu solubility. And let's just make a random curve, okay? So if something, if I look at that curve and look at how much I'm dissolving, and if it's exactly on that curve, that would tell us that it is a saturated solution. I, it, I contain the maximum amount I should, according to that graph. If I contain less, it's unsaturated. And if my region is above, it's super saturated. So I'll get you to sketch that down just on this piece of paper because I purposely left a lot of room here just so you could do that. And then we'll look at uh, some questions here. So let's look at this. What type of solution? So let's call that number one A. Uh, let's see here. Let's dissolve uh, 20 G's of... KCL at 60 degrees C. B, let's look at 50 grams of KClO3 at 80 degrees C. Then let's look at 90 grams of sodium nitrate at 10 degrees C. So we'll do a couple of questions here. So pause the video, copy those questions out, and then we'll look at the graph to see exactly what type of solutions those will be. Okay, so if you had a chance to do that, let's look at the first one. So if I have 20 grams of KCl, so case, the KCl line is right here, okay? Uh, what if I dissolve 20 grams at 60 degrees C? So it's 60. So here is the gram of solute I dissolve, and here's the temperature of the solution. So 20 grams at 60. So let's see where they intersect. So 20 grams, 60, that would be right here. Now, where am I? Am I on the KCL curve? Am I below it or am I above it? If I notice here, here's the KCL curve right here and 20 grams at 60 falls below that curve. So I am below that curve, which means it's going to be unsaturated. 
because I fall below the maximum amount. Okay, let's look at the next one. 50 grams of KClO3. So let's find the KClO3 line first of all. Here it is right here. KClO3, there's the curve. What if I have 50 grams at 80? So 50 grams at 80, 50 at 80. Look at that. I'm right above the KClO3 curve. So it is super saturated because I'm above. See, this it falls on the K. If it had been KCL, it'd be saturated because it's right on the curve. But unfortunately, I asked about KClO3. Maybe let's just say that saturated for KCL though. Is 50 at 80, 50 at 80 falls on the KCL curve perfectly. And then the last one here, 90 grams of sodium nitrate. So let's find sodium nitrate. There it is right there. If I have 90 grams dissolved at 10 degrees, 90 grams, 10 degrees. Oh yes, I'm above the line. So it is super saturated. Okay, so that's how you read that curve. Let's maybe do a couple more here. Let's look at um, number two. What would you need to dissolve to make a saturated solution? This is through two examples there. So let's say, um, uh, let's say KNO3 at 40 degrees C. And then let's say K2CR2O7 at 30 degrees. So what would I have to dissolve to make a saturated solution? So let's take a look. So KNO3. KNO3. Let's take a look at KNO3. Here it is right here. And if I wanted to make a saturated solution at 40 degrees C. So here's KNO3. Here's 40. So if I go up until I hit the curve, it looks like it's almost halfway in between 60 and 70. Maybe slightly less than half. So it looks like it'd be around 64. So at 40 degrees C, if I dissolve 64 grams of KNO3, it would be saturated. Oops, not 64 degrees C, but 64 grams of KNO3. That's how much I would need to dissolve. And then K2Cr207, here's K2Cr207 right here. At 30 degrees, right here, it looks like it's in between 10 and 20, maybe slightly a bit bigger than the halfway point. So 16, oh, how can I did it? 16 grams K2Cr207. Right, so that's how you do it. How, that's how you handle the graphs there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so you should be able to do the assignment. Um, look back to here. And of course, this is the key here to reading that graph there. If it's on the line, it's saturated. Below, unsaturated. Above, super saturated. All right, see you again.